10. Increasing the carbon content in steel has what effect? Does it make the steel more flexible, make the steel less ductile, um, make steel more corrosion resistant, make the steel easier to weld? This is one of the examples um, where there's actually a couple of uh, right answers, but one is probably a better right answer than another. Um, uh, a is definitely not true. Adding carbon um, uh, into steel does not make it more flexible. Uh, and D is um, uh, definitely not true, uh, making it easier to weld. Those, those are definitely not true. The two that are sort of pretty reasonable answers are B and C, um, but the best answer really is C. Um, because that's the reason that you have, the, that's one of the main reasons why you have these, um, these differences. So just a quick kind of back, backdrop onto all of this. Um, when this kind of construction steel really first started happening, it wasn't steel, it was actually um, cast iron. Uh, and so cast iron um, was this kind of miracle material that people you know, were, at first were using for, to, for tools and for like swords and uh, I'm not sure if they use cast for swords. I don't think it would be a good sword, but they use it for, for very specific kinds of tools. And it, it was very interesting, but it was hard to make. And so you'd make relatively small amounts. Then they started figuring out how to make much bigger amounts and they started using it for structural uh, purposes. Uh, a number of disasters later, they realized, wait, we've got a problem here. And um, that problem was that the material is very, very strong, but it's also very brittle. And that material has, um, uh, kind of in the range of, uh, I think, maybe 2% to 5% or something. 5% sounds like a lot, but I think I've seen that written, of carbon in, in there. So all that carbon makes it, uh, helps make it strong, but also makes it very, very brittle. Um, so by reducing that carbon, uh, we're able to make it much more ductile, which is really helpful. It makes it uh, easier to weld. It does all kinds of these really strong benefits. Um, and so typical mild steel is probably going to be something like 0.3%, uh, so it's way less. Um, as you get into uh, like higher content uh, carbon steels, you might get up to like 0.5%, uh, maybe even a little bit higher than that, probably less than, less than 1%, definitely less than 2%. Um, and those ones have certain benefits, but as you get up to those, those larger numbers, you're going to start losing uh, some of the ductility. Uh, you're going to have certain um, disadvantages of it. Uh, the ductility is really important because uh, the ductility means that that flexibleness, that the steel, when it gets loaded, it can flex, but then when the load is taken off, it goes back to its original shape. It's incredibly helpful for buildings. Uh, and one of the big advantages of it is that if it's really, things are really going terrible, it will bend, bend, bend before it finally gives way. So if you're a firefighter running through a building or something like that and you feel the floor is actually bending below you, you know it's time to get the heck out of that, uh, out of that building. Um, so it, it's, it's an incredibly useful um, aspect to how steel works. But by adding a little bit more of the carbon, we're making it a little stiffer in that way. It's not as, not as ductile. But also, the reason that you would really want that is it does these other things. For example, it's much less uh, um, uh, open to, to certain kinds of corrosion. And so depending on where you're using it, it has these certain advantages. Mm -hmm.